He weighed in at 224 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with 20 wins, no losses, two no contests, with six wins coming by way of knockout. He is representing the long-time fighting family tradition. Please welcome the IBF number four heavyweight contender and the current USBA heavyweight champion, introducing the undefeated Buster Mathis Jr. black trunks and fighting out of Catskill, New York. He weighed in at 219 pounds with a record of 42 wins, only one defeat with 36 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the youngest ever to win a heavyweight title and the last to unify it in the ring by beating the champions of the WBC, WBA, and IBF. Currently ranked the number one contender and continuing his quest to regain his titles, please welcome the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the one, the only, Mike Tyson. Once again, a referee in charge, Frank Cappuccino. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions. Protect your sife at all times. Touch gloves. Well, for Buster Mathis Jr., his father, the one-time heavyweight contender, Buster Mathis Sr., who died of a heart attack three months ago, gave his son, Sean O'Grady, a word of advice about intimidation. Yeah, he said, even if he can't be a champ, you can make a lot of money. This, this business isn't always about hitting or getting hit. Get in there, box, and move. Walk around a fighter like Mike Tyson. Don't be intimidated. And here we go, and Mathis just falling down, not being struck by Tyson, who himself missed on a left uppercut to begin things here. He ran right at Mike Tyson, much like Peter McNeely did, which he thought was interesting. He said Mike didn't handle pressure too well. Well, this is interesting because that's like a lamb walking to the slaughter. He ran to the slaughter. Well, he was surprised that Peter McNeely was able to back up Iron Mike Tyson, and that's what he's trying to do. Put him back on his heels. A fighter doesn't have as much power backing up. Oh, and another missed uppercut by Mike Tyson. Come on, get that hands loose. One of the things that the strategy involved with Buster Mathis Jr. tonight, the defensive, and again, Tyson continues to miss. And missing again, and missing again. And Mathis lands. It takes more out of a fighter to swing and miss right, than to swing and hit. Step back. Step back. Yeah, his own step body would have step to stop the punch as opposed to the other body stopping it for him. And he said he was a good slipper. So far, he's lived up to it. Mike was a bit wild in the Peter McNeely fight back in August. Nothing much in terms of evaluation game there. I think tonight there will be an evaluation. But you know, in those punches of that Peter McNeely fight, he missed many times like he's done in the first part of this round. Let him go, let him go, Mike. Well, by pinning Tyson against the ropes, he almost guarantees he'll last the round, especially with those 224 pounds. Tyson connects right there. And Mathis comes back with the right uppercut. Mathis is trying to stay so close that Mike can't wind up winning those big bombs and hit him. Exactly. So far, it's worked. Do you like the strategy? So far, it's not bad. Jumping in, jumping out, pressing Mike, staying inside. We'll see what happens when he gets hit, though. Ronnie punches. There's a shot by Mike Tyson with the left. Get off his well, Buster get said, off. I have to get his respect uh, early. Step back. So I'm going to go in with a barrage in the early part of this fight, and I think he has done that. And he has done a nice job of slipping on the inside, Buster has. He said that was the most underrated part of this game, the slipping. Yes. I have seen him in fights before where... 
he wasn't slipping where he did get hit. But tonight he's doing a good job slipping. Tyson missing again with the left uppercut. Tyson really trying to swing from right, break, the third punch, row. Step back, Buster. Just briefly a moment ago, Mike switched to southpaw and threw like a right jab, which I thought was interesting. Well, it's not too hard right now to discern the early strategy by Buster Mathis. Oh, yeah, smother the power, get inside get of it. Loose, get him loose, what get you him loose. can't do with a fighter like Mike Tyson, his hooks are too big. You can't go away from him. All he does is extend his hooks. Yeah. Bobby Chaz and Sean O'Grady and James Brown, Kevin Harlan, ringside at Philadelphia Spectrum. We are through with round one, and Buster Mathis is lasting. Fourth and inches, Coach Bannon. Mike Tyson is not sharp. Look at all these misses from him on the inside. Buster Mathis, there is a miss. Strike one, strike two. Buster Mathis doing a good job of rolling on that big belly that he has to try to avoid punches. Here comes Tyson now, connecting with the left jab and coming with the right one again. He is carded by Mathis. You notice that Mike this time, instead of coming out throwing hooks, come on, come on, come on, which Buster can get under, get came out jamming, loose. setting up the jab. Even a short man go, can be effective with the jab. Mathis picked off some of Tyson's shots with his glove and made a miss with his movement. That slipping we talked about before. And again, Tyson coming and missing again with the left hook. But swinging with a lot of power. Swinging and missing, Mike Tyson. Says that he is physically stronger now. Oh, low blow from Buster Mathis. Mathis had to do something to take away that barrage from Mike Tyson. He didn't want to be intimidated. Bobby Chaz, what about the size, the height of Mathis and Tyson going up against a guy almost shorter? Well, you know, that's a funny thing because I used to tell people, listen, if I ever go up to headway and I put Mike, I'd get underneath Mike. He'd have to punch down at me, which is something he's not only not used to, but not as good at. And here you see some quick combinations by Mathis. With the combination right there, and that's exactly what Mathis is doing. There is no quit in Buster Mathis. Game young man. And he's taking it to Mike Tyson. Tyson's the one trying to hold Break, on. Step back. No one thought that go, Buster Mathis go. Jr. would last through round one. He has done that, and he is halfway through round two. Now, as we spoke about before, the jury's still out until he fights a top contender. Well, some of his detractors may say, wow, Buster Mathis uh, man handled him at points. Stop Mike isn't on, the Buster. Mike of old. Tyson misses again with the left. From the now top the left. And he comes with the right. And Mathis comes back. Game kid. Buster Mathis loves the uppercut. There is his best punch. Watch on the inside. You turn your palm in and throw that uppercut. Both of them trading him. There's a body blow thrown with the heavy right by Mike Tyson. Mathis says he has more power than the right hand than the left. His style is moving his head, slipping inside, fast hands with sharp punches. See, this is one thing bigger, taller fighters can't do to Mike. Can't get over the rim. That was the right shot to the thigh. On the hip bone. If you can hit your opponent on the hip bone and get away with it, you won't be able to walk as well. He'll notice that tomorrow. He can wait till tomorrow. He has to last tonight. Oh, he'll feel every punch tomorrow. Oh, and there is a nice right up with it. And then Tyson counters himself. Now it's changing blows. Mike is still missing a lot of big shots. Big clean shots at the big tall guys. Don't get out of the way of the little man seems to be able to. Tyson again missing with the left. Underneath. The game has begun, and the clock is... Right, now you go to the now third round, non-stop action in this battle between two big heavyweights, and a uh, surprise that Buster Mathis Jr. has lasted into the third round against Mike Tyson. I think he's got Mike a little mad now. Matt, Mike seems to have a little bit different on, get attitude. Get he's got to work in behind the jab. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Mike Tyson's to step back and jab. Right, right. Yeah, they're telling him between rounds. Jay Wright saying five, six, seven punch combinations behind the jab. Whoa. Tyson missing twice with the right. Oh, Mathis felt that right there, and again he plows into Tyson in the ropes. Tyson said, no matter what happens tonight, trust me, I'm going to give you something special. Stop punching. He's giving Buster Mathis a lot special. Mathis is 
has been crowded. Mathis has been slipping punches. Mathis has been ducking. And it's caused Tyson to miss numerous times on big, wild shots. Well, they're very happy in the corner of Buster Mathis. They know that Mike Tyson has 27 KOs in the first three rounds. So you have to get past those first three. Joey Ferriello in his corner. Frank Cappuccino separating the two. They're Staying close. Down low once again, yeah. but the right uppercut goes Buster Mathis. He's going to turn into a little bit of a wall. Duck, 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 come inside, hold on. Duck, 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 rope, watches, hold on. It's going to become a little bit of a wall now. Now, this is the first time that Tyson has had Mathis up against the ropes. Body punches, and Mathis trying to fight his way out of it. Oh, you can hear him, too. Uh. And a miss by Tyson. Mike's loading up a little too much. Buster can see some of them coming. He's getting out of the way of most of them. All right, break. Break. Come on. Uh, man. Listen, when I say break, I want you both to break. Frank Cappuccino. Oh, Tyson Cutt with the right uppercut right there. See what Mike's doing? He's stepping now. He's coming in and uh, stepping off and firing the uppercut, waiting out. for Buster to duck with Buster, Buster Mathis to get duck back, Buster. and come up with the shot. Let's see again by ducking. Yeah, trying to get the angle is Tyson. Use that right foot and pivot. Swing around on your opponent's side and crack. Oh, he got a right uppercut. Another right uppercut. And down goes Mathis. So you step back and did it again. Stepped oh, off and around six, and ripped that uppercut to seven, where Mathis was ducking eight, right into it. Nine, ten. He didn't beat the count. A devastating right uppercut. Two of them by Mike Tyson. And he is knocked down. Mathis Jr. Well, no one thought that Buster Mathis Jr. would last one round. No one thought he would last two rounds. And almost no one gave him a chance to get into the third. But that's what he did. Somewhat of a surprise here in Philadelphia. But Mike Tyson wins again. And we will be back with replays and interviews coming up after this. As Mike Tyson wins by TKO at 2.32 on the third round. Italians do. Right now, for a decision on the Mathis Tyson bout, let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 2 minutes, 32 seconds in round number 3. A referee in charge, Frank Cappuccino, reaches the count of 10. The winner by way of knockout, Mike Tyson. All right, right now, let's go inside the ring, a very crowded ring. Bobby Chez is standing by with Mike Tyson. I'm very familiar with his style of fighting. I was raised, and I'm the best at that style of fighting. I knew every move he was making. That's how come when I, when I did a couple of particular moves, he was, he was stunned. He didn't expect them. We're going to lead you into a replay here. I want you to call it for us when you see it. We're going to put it up here on the monitor in a couple of seconds. Be a replay of the knockout. As you know, I made the move when I caught him. And I tried to catch him again. Then I caught him off the top of the head again. Then there's another one. The Jets glance and really didn't hit him as hard as I anticipated to hit him. But I knew those punches would, would, would probably knock him out or uh, hurt him severely because he didn't see the punches coming. You, you promised the people here in Philly something they wouldn't forget. I'm sure they didn't forget it. They gave you a great greeting when you came in. They received you very warmly. What's next? Is it Frank Bruno in March? Well, all praise be to Allah. I bear witness there's only one God and Muhammad the Prophet. Peace.